necessarily. Nice thing about mass is the judges create their own orders. So you're going to get a decision from the judge within a period of time, usually um, if it's an uncontested within 30 days from your hearing. You'll get a, uh, a temporary order, which is your divorce before the divorce. They call it the Nisi uh, period. And then uh, six, uh, 90 days from the uh, entry of that judgment, it'll be final. It's a little different in Rhode Island because the, we as attorneys are responsible for preparing right. our own orders. So the long and short of the question is hire an attorney, get it done right yeah. the first time. And I'm sure people have heard of, some have had, what's called a legal separation. What's the difference? Is that a divorce before a divorce? What's Let's the difference? The, it's a bed and board in Rhode Island. Mm, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of different um, formats that Rhode Island uses. It goes back to um, the idea, a divorce from bed and board was a divorce without a divorce. So it was a legal separation. Mm. Um, Maybe at one time they even called it the bishop's divorce because remember we're still a very Catholic state yeah. and since there's a disposition against divorce and having divorces, they created this way of being able to get divorced but you were still married at the end. In so fact, that, it's a at, legal separation. At one point there were a lot of attorneys who would not handle divorce because we have such a large Catholic population. Right. You know, there was mostly, um, I guess, non-Catholic attorneys that were handling a lot of the divorces. Right. And there was also this petition you could file, which was commencement um, of an action for support or maintenance without filing a divorce action, which is also a, a way of doing a legal separation. Some people today just separate and enter into a property settlement agreement, mm -hmm. which is basically the agreement that Jackie was referring to that you would, might use in Massachusetts as your divorce document. In Rhode Island, you can have an agreement or a contract between the two parties that if you do end up getting divorced, can be presented as a contract that you've entered into, which lays out all of the resolution of your property and custody and visitation issues. We, so why ahead. would people do that now? If, why not just do the divorce? Now? Well, some people don't want to get divorced. They, Still the for whatever, yeah, some, some. Okay. for moral reasons, they don't want to get the divorce. Maybe they don't, maybe they do want a divorce, but they don't want to be the one to file it. But if someone comes in my office and they say, I want a legal separation, I always ask them, what is your goal here? Do you yes. not want to be married anymore? No. Well, then you're doing the divorce before the divorce. Right. You're going to pay you're me pay twice, twice to do the same thing that I can do in a divorce. In Massachusetts, um, they don't have a bed and board, but what they do have is what's called a complaint for separate support, similar to mm. what David was alluding to earlier. Um, you have a separation. The court uh, allows a separation, but you put into place certain terms of the separation. What is the support going to be for the children? Is there going to be spousal support or alimony? Who's going to pay the mortgage? Who's going to pay the school tuition? All of those things need to be dealt with because you just can't leave it open. By leaving it open, you create a disaster. Right. And again, I think a good attorney, when you come in and say you want a separation, will go into the reasons why. Because if there's a valid reason to have a separation, then fine, that's something you should do. Sometimes people come in, I, I, recently I talked to someone who wanted a separation because they didn't want to get divorced because they didn't want to lose the medical coverage. Well, yeah. in Rhode Island, we actually have a statute that yeah. says if either party has medical coverage through their employment, they can stay on until either the husband or wife remarries. So if there's no likelihood that either is going to remarry, it's probably not a good reason just to stay married. But if one of them is about to remarry, then that other person who suddenly loses his or her support. I would think that they would want to make sure that those bases are covered or they're going to end up with the, the well, proverbial short end of the stick. If either party wants to get divorced in Rhode Island, you're going you to end can. up getting divorced yeah. anyway. Yeah, there's no such thing as uh, not giving a divorce. Right. A lot of times between all the um, animosity between the husband and wife, You'll, say, you'll hear someone come in and say, well, my husband said he'll never give me a divorce. It doesn't matter. All you need is one person to testify that there are reconcilable differences that cannot right. be um, rectified. That's the, the so two that, things that you would say, I'm so, not going to give him the divorce yeah. or I'm not going to give her the divorce and I won't sign for it. You, they don't have you to. Don't, you exactly. just need one person to testify. You bring on your witness that testifies to domicile and the fact that the marriage is irretrievably broken. So. And there is something called no fault. Does that pertain to Rhode Island and Massachusetts? Yeah, that's right. the 1A divorce that I was talking about, um, which means the court doesn't really care what your grounds are. They're not going to make note of why these two people are separated. All you need to prove is that there are irreconcilable differences that led to the breakdown of your marriage, that there's no hope of reconciliation. 
Same thing in Rhode Island with a nominal. Right. Rhode Island developed, um, as many other states did, from a state where there had to be fault grounds and there had to be testimony. You couldn't come in and just make believe, you know, there was an adulterer or some other ground for divorce. There had to be real grounds till the point where we developed the irreconcilable differences statute, which is a sort of a no fault. We don't get along for whatever reason it is. We argue about finances or how to raise the children, or we just don't see eye to eye on what our social life should be. That's grounds to get divorced. So you can, in Rhode Island, list whatever grounds for divorce you want. You can have a fault ground, adultery, uh, habitual drunkenness. But you have better have proof. But you better have proof. That's right. You better have proof because without proof, you're not going to get right. your divorce. Right. So what a lot of times judges, um, lawyers will put irreconcilable differences and gross and confirmed right. drunkenness. Right. Or, or the other grounds for divorce is living separate and apart for a space of three years. Three years, yeah, yeah. But that's a no fault. That's right. under the no fault as well. Yeah. I know we have plenty to talk about relative to divorces, but if someone is understanding that there's such a thing as no fault divorce, there's always an issue about property and how we're going to divvy that up. If there's no fault divorce, meaning I don't, it doesn't really matter whether or not someone committed some unsavory act, but what, how does that impact on your s dividing property up then? Uh, right. I didn't do anything wrong, he didn't do anything wrong, so I should get more, I should get all of the property. How does that work? You can still file a divorce on irreconcilable differences, but raise in the trial the, the statute on equitable distribution in Rhode Island lays out a number of factors. Conduct is one of them. Okay. It's not the only one. A lot mm -hmm. of people come in and say, well, I'll, he was a bad guy or she was a bad woman and I should get all the property. Well, that's only one of several factors in the mm -hmm. equitable distribution statute. The length of the marriage is a, a factor in the contribution. Contribution to the marital household, education of the parties, um, occupation, future, acquisition of capital, right. employability, education, similar in Massachusetts. And the, and the judge needs to make findings as to each um, right. factor in determining who's going to get what. I, I always tell people the last thing you want is for a judge to divide up your, your marital asset. estates because. You're not probably going to get what you want, so you're better off trying to resolve it without having to go to trial. It's the second worst thing you can leave to a judge. Yeah. The first worst it's thing custody. is custody. Yes. So, and back to that, if um, custody issues are one of the, those are one of the key, these are the key issues, how do you distinguish between someone who wants custody of their child or they want that as leverage for property mm -hmm. and coercing someone to get yeah, more good? There's some case law on that in right. Rhode Island. There right. is. Uh, in fact, mm -hmm. I believe there was um, a lawyer who may have been sanctioned or yes. um, disciplined in some form or fashion for using custody as a wedge for something else, yeah. whether it was um, equitable distribution or, um, what it does to the children is just um, yeah. unable to right. be, it's, as, it's irreparable. As lawyers, we're officers of the court. We can't just create an issue where there isn't one, and we have an obligation to tell our clients if they're trying to press an issue that has no grounds, no merit, we have to tell them that. Yeah, sometimes we've actually left a case because of that. Right. Well, we certainly have many more issues to talk about, and I think one of the issues that I wanted to bring up, I think we'll wait till next time, is you've brought up so many issues already. How does someone really know how to get a good lawyer who's going to put you through those paces and help you work through some of those things before you actually mm -hmm. have a problem? I guess I would want to say thank you to Jackie Grasso and David Bazaar of Audette Bazaar, Cordero and Grasso Law Firm in East Providence for joining us once again. We have many more issues to discuss, many more aspects of this to tackle. I hope you'll be with us also um, for our next session and we will continue